My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 133 and 134. Problem number 133, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. It's quite straightforward problem. It says find two consecutive numbers such that the fifth of the smaller number exceeds the sixth of the larger one by one. Fifth of the smaller number. So if you have two consecutive numbers and if you're going to call the first one x then the next number after that is going to be x plus one. And that of course is the larger one. We are told that the fifth of the smaller number exceeds, this is a smaller number, if you were to take the fifth of the smaller number this quantity we are told exceeds the sixth of the larger one in other words, if you were to take the difference of the two quantity, this quantity here, the fifth of the fifth of the larger number, exceeds the sixth of the smaller one by one. So if you take the difference, what we are told is that the difference comes out to be one. And that's all there is. That's our equation. We just have to work on it, and that's all there is. Let's let's keep going. The first thing we want to do is to have a common denominator throughout the entire equation. We have a five here and we have a six here. The common denominator is going to be 30. How can we convert this denominator of 5 into a 30? It's very straightforward. Take this first quantity and multiply it by 6 over 6. Because 6 over 6 is just 1. 6 over 6 is just 1. So we haven't changed this quantity. This quantity is still x over 5 times 1, which is still x over 5. Similarly here, we have a 6. We want 30 at the bottom. So let's multiply this quantity by 5 over 5. So now this quantity has a denominator of 30, this quantity has a denominator of 30, we need a 30 over here. So let's take that one and multiply it by 30 over 30. Now all the terms in the, throughout the entire equation have the same denominators, and since they have the same denominators, we are at liberty to simply ignore it. It plays no role, it ceases to be significant. So let's figure it out now, so we can figure, ignore the 30. We just have to solve the equation, very simple equation here. We have 6 times x, which is going to be 6x minus, here we have 5 times this quantity, x plus 1. So it's 5 times x plus 1. I'm going to write here one more time so it's easier to see. And that would have to be equal 1 times 30, which is 30. Let's open this up so we get 5 times x, which is going to be 5x. Remember, there is a negative outside, so this negative is going to be distributed throughout. Negative and a positive is negative and then 5 times 1 is going to be negative 5. This is where you have to pay attention because this is where most people end up making a careless mistake. Careless mistake because otherwise it's quite straightforward as you can see. That's 30. 5x, 6x minus 5x is an x. Bring the 5 to the other side by adding 5 to both sides. So if we add 5 to both sides, we end up with 6x minus 5x is just an x. This 5 is going to go away, and x would have to equal 30 plus 5, which is 35. I made it far too complicated. The answer is x is 35. If x is 35, then the larger number, which is the next number, which is going to, would have to be 36. Let's quickly verify that this answer actually does make any sense based on what is given in the problem. So the problem tells us, this is our verification, the problem tells us that if you were to take the fifth of the larger uh, fifth of the smaller number, which is 35, the fifth of the 35 is going to be 7. That quantity we are told exceeds the sixth of the larger. What's the sixth of the larger? Larger is the sixth, 36. If you take a sixth of it, sixth of the 36 is 6, and we are told that the fifth of the smaller quantity, fifth of the smaller quantity exceeds the sixth of the larger quantity by 1, which it does, which it does, which means our answer is correct. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. 134. We are told two numbers differ by 8. We are told the two numbers differ by 8. In other words, their difference is 8. We are told that 1 is, 1 is 5 seventh 
of the other. One is five seven of the other. Our job, our job is simply to find them. What are they? Just give me a second. I'm still here. I have not gone anywhere. What are they? The question is, what are those two numbers? Let's get going. Let's see what we can do. So we have two quantities here, and we are told that they differ by eight. So let's let's call those two quantities x and y, and they differ by eight, which means if you were to take the difference, that difference would have to be eight. Then they go on to tell us that was the first first equation from the first sentence. Then they go on to tell us that one is five seventh of the other. One is equal means is. Five seventh of the other. Let's call the other one y, which is what we call here. Obviously, just like call it y. That's exactly what we called it here. One is five seventh of the other, and that's what it is. Now we have to get going. The only thing that you have to pay attention in a situation like this is to make sure that both of these equations actually do make sense here. Here we are claiming that x. Listen very carefully. Okay, this is where you have to pay attention. Here we are claiming that x is five seventh of y. Whatever the y is x is only 5 seventh of it. If x is only 5 seventh of the, this quantity, this equation implies, this equation implies, this equation tells us that if, that's, if, that, if that were to be true, then x would have to be smaller than y. Why would x have to be smaller than y? This equation implies that x would have to be smaller than y because x is only 5 seventh of the other. Now, if x is smaller than y, then this equation that we wrote here, a smaller number minus the larger number, a smaller number minus the larger number, the difference cannot be 8, their difference would have to be negative 8. Or, if you like, if you don't want to convert this into negative, just rewrite this equation properly. This y is the larger number, larger number minus the smaller number, we are told their difference is 8. This is, this, this is the equation. So we have to go back and modify this equation, correct it, based on the fact that from here we know which one is the larger one. Let's carry on, shall we? So y minus x equals 8. But we know x is 5 seventh of y. We know that x is x is 5 x is 5 seventh of y. We know that 5 seventh of y. That's what x is. Let's put it in here. So y minus 5 seventh of y equals 8. We just sort of substitute the value of x from the second equation here. x equals 5 seventh of y. Put it in here. Now we have a denominator of 7 here. We need a denominator of 7 here and a denominator of 7 here. So let's, let's give everybody the same denominator so that we don't have to deal with the denominator here. Let's multiply this by 7 over 7. So now this quantity also has a denominator of 7. And let's multiply this guy by 7 over 7. There you go. Now the whole entire equation has a denominator of 7. The 7 plays no role now. So essentially it is 7 times y, which is 7y, minus 5 times y, which is 5y, equals... 8 times 7. 7y minus 5y is just 2y and therefore y would have to equal 8 times 7 over 2. Divide both sides by 2 here. If you divide both sides by 2 we get 8 times 7 over 2 and therefore y is simply 8 times 7 over 2. We see 8 on the top, we see 2 at the bottom. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. Divide top and bottom by 2, the 8 becomes 4 and we end up with 4 times 7 which is 28. As always, as always, it's a good idea to verify our work. We're going to verify right here. Let's squeeze it right here, the verification. It only takes a few seconds to verify it. So we were told, we were told right here that x is 5 seventh of y. And y we are claiming, y we are claiming is 28. So let's put it in here. 5 7 of 28. Divide top and bottom by 7 and 28 will become 4. In other words, in other words, if if y is indeed 28, then x would have to be 5 times 4, which is 20. 5 times 4, which is 20. And as you can see there, it makes perfect sense because if x is 20, if x is 20 and y we are claiming is 28, then it makes perfect sense that 28 minus 20 equals 8. Our answer is indeed correct. Otherwise, it wouldn't have made sense. Do you understand? 
Otherwise, all the pieces of the puzzle would not have fit. Bye now.